we're going to take a good look at these games. We're going to start with this game, Magnus, with the white pieces. It was game one. Remember, white's won all the games so far. So Magnus is thinking, let's keep up the trend. I got white. Let me hurt this guy's feelings. All right. So let me just switch to my multi board so you guys can see what I see. Do you see what I see? Yeah, that's right. I got all the classic movies in my head as well. That's the old school stuff. What do you guys know about that? Most of you guys weren't born uh, before the 90s. Okay. Michiko in the building. What's, what's up? What's up? What's up? How you feeling, Michiko? I know. I know. It's early. Everybody's like, Marie. Well, all my West Coast people are like, Marie, we just woke up. We're getting ready for work. But this is your coffee right here. Okay. I don't drink coffee, but this is your coffee right here. If you want to wake up just right. Morning, morning, indeed. Let's go. So, Magnus starts off with E4. By the way, the match has started off with E4 every single game. E4, best by test. Everybody's playing E4. At least these guys are. E4, E4, every single game. All right, let's keep that as a running theme. It continued in this game as well. So here we go. We're going to the Gioco Piano. That is this Italian game. And nice and slow, nice and slow. All right, we get to this position. And Hikaru says, you know what? Let's get busy right away. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get active. Let's get sharp. Let's go. Go. Let's go. Go. All right. Touch my nose if I'm real. Well, you want me to touch my nose, my ears, the lips. I'm the real person. Okay. This is not a dummy. This is not. No, for real. All right. Let's keep it going, folks. Much love from India. I'm feeling you. Indeed. I'm, I'm liking this early morning thing. I might have to do a little bit more often. I just, you know, just a once in a while. Don't get too spoiled, folks, but I might have to drop that every once in a while. 9G4 rookie two. This was like a rookie move, a basic move. Until Ikaru said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to step my king to the corner. All right. Let me just chill. And when you do the most natural attacking move, boom, let's go. Let's get it started, folks. Boom. F5. We like moves like that, sacking pieces right out the gate. Right out the gate. F5. You want to take my piece? Go right ahead. Well, Magnus is no dummy, all right? He takes this on G4. Well, takes and move the knight somewhere. Who cares? Here comes G3, and there's just a monstrous attack on the F2 square coming from multiple directions. What's up with that B hop on C5? Hitting hard. The rook. Hitting hard. The pawn hitting hard. Just threats immediately, instantly. There's, there's just too much. You can't let this happen. This is, eh, eh, I thought, I thought oh, we were white. Like, what is this happening? If you think, well, you know what? Let's drop a little knight of seven action on him and see what happens. Winning an exchange. Yeah, yeah. Is the attack enough? Well, guess what? Big dog time. Yes, it, the attack is not just enough. You're dying on the spot. Matutsky on the way, or you're giving away material. It's ugly. It's just, bleh. you don't want any parts of this position. It's so bad. There's even, there's just no defense. There's no defense. I'm not even going to bother trying to show you guys something. You guys can figure it out there. So F5 on the board, Hikaru. This is move eight with the black pieces. Like, let's go. Let's go. Let's get sharp. Let's get busy. Magnus is like, you know what? Here's the deal. <laughs> I ain't trying to get attacked like that. Let me just drop Bishop G5 on him. Whoop! Sneak the knight back. Does Hikaru. And said, okay, I got F5. I snuck F5 in there. Now, that was aggressive and all, but is this better for black? Mm, well, Magnus said, I don't know. I I'm developing naturally. Your pieces are up. One knight is pinned. I got everybody out, and I'm still putting pressure on the center. What you got? A little D6 action, that's okay. What if I pin you? What if I attack that? I mean, hey, I already got you pinned. Let me apply a little extra pressure. And now Hikaru said, let's open it up. All right, I got no problems with that. Let's keep it going. And now a little Bishop E6 action. Now, there's some sharp variations. Again, we can't get into everything, but this is the fun part now because now Magnus said, let me do a little Knight F six and keep it going again as well be careful you're gonna have to take that piece you might want to consider this one except boom just because you're hitting my rook on e2 right here with your b hop doesn't mean i can't play tactical as well 
this would definitely have been an interesting line, folks, because here he could play bishop takes, hitting the queen, and takes. This would have been an interesting line because of this crazy line. Boom! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yippee, yay, yippee, yo. What's this about? That's right. If you're going to get my rook, let me sack it a different way. And in this position, after bishop, isn't your queen hanging? Well, uh, I know what you have. But what do I have is the real question. Rook takes on f2 and the sauce is on. It's just like, what the heck is happening in this crazy chess position? This is just too much fun. This is just too much. This, this is wild. We just started, folks. This is the heavyweight matchup. Boom! This is what I'm talking about. Heavyweight style chess. This is what we love. Hikaru said, no part to that. Let's go. Let's play it. Simple. Now, we see bishops hanging everywhere. Magnus said, I'm taking your light square bishop. Pawn takes. Now, hold on. Who got the better of that flurry? The initial flurry in that position? Hard to say. Because white looks like he's dominating the light squares with the b-hop. Yes? Look at that bishop. It's great. Except black has opened up a file and has trumps as well. The bishop hitting on f2. Your knight really can't move. Now this square looks like it could be tenderoni for a bishop, but a knight could drop back and attack it and it won't necessarily be that secure. So who knows what's going on? That was just a wild flurry and none of us knew no, you cannot easily say, well, this side is better right now. That side is better. No, don't even try it. Don't even try it. Even the engines are like, what? Um, mm, we're just going to say white's a little bit better here, maybe. I mean, <laughs> because why? black's king is a little, little bit compromised. Nobody cares about this king. This king is fine as far as it's concerned. It's hiding out in the corner on a dark square away from the action. So, C3 by Magnus to guard the D4 square. Remember, knight D4 would want to come so that he can... Pry open this file and get an F2. That's what he wanted. So Magnus shut that down with a little C3 action. And now Queen F6 hitting the bishop, gaining a tempo and saying, where are you going to put your bishop? Like, which diagonal? Pick pick your poison. Magnus said, let me go to G4. What I'm going to do from G4 is I'll shut down your H5 push. And I'll always have access to F5 if need be. So let me do that. Also shore up the knight. So you see... What's interesting about this position is the dark square control by black versus the white square control by white. So it's hard to figure out, hard to properly evaluate this position because both sides have their trumps. And so it's really hard to say, well, this one's better. No, I like this side. Uh, who do you like? It depends on the kind of player you are. So Hikaru decided to shift sides with the move knight e7 right at this moment. Thank you very much, Farnsley. He decided to switch sides with knight e7 and... Now the move, that also stops, by the way, the bishop at five thrust at any time. And also the knight might show up on g6, typical maneuver in these openings. By the way, the knight wasn't doing much on c6. It was shut down. I mean, it had no future anyway. So get it out of there, off to greener pastures. So Magnus hits with queen d2, hitting the pawn. And now rook to g8. You're like, wait, the rook just left the file. The rook was on a good file. Well, what's this other rook going to do? What do you think? That rook could come into the game as well. At least that's what Black hoped. So this move was played. And now Magnus switched sides again. Let me attack on the other side. Drop this piece back. And typical theme, let me go try to trap this bishop. And now to move a5. Domination on the dark square is very difficult for Magnus to make any headway here. Queen to a2. Again, if you look, it's like they're playing on opposite colors. Except for the rook on g8. All of Black's pieces are in dark squares, except for the king on g1, well, for now, and the rook on a1, white has migrated to the light squares. So it's like 32 squares. You got, I got 32. What's really going on? Nobody knows. So queen g6 played next, and Magnus said, all right, here's what we're going to do. I see you have aspirations. Aspirations. That's what I said. Aspirations. The last time I said that word on the show, it was with a 10-year-old, Tani Adiwumi. And when I said aspirations, he said... Excuse me, this might be a funny question, but um, what is aspirations? I was like, oh, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I forgot. You're 10. Okay. 10, I'm bringing out my, my dictionary, my thesaurus, my SAT knowledge. Okay. Aspiration it just means hopes. It just means your hopes. That's all. Your hopes, your goals, your dreams for the future. You're aspirational. All right. So it's aspirations. He said, you have aggressive aspirations. All right. I have other puns with that word, but I'm just going to leave it alone for now. 
You want to attack on this side. You got a little h5. Whoop, whoop, play. Let me play queen of e6 and shut down your aspirations. All right? Your aspirations. Queen of e6. Let's, tra let's trade off the queen, the big dogs. And it was this moment that Hikaru missed a sweet, just delish shot. All right? Delish possibility. And what was that? He, he played queen back to g7, but he had h5 anyway. Now, this was a rapid game, so he didn't peep this possibility quickly. The reason why this is good is because if you take and take, now bishop takes is not playable because of, boom, knight f4 hitting the rook on e2 and the bishop on h5. So he'd be going forward, baby, forward, forward action. So that would have been a nice move to get his aspirational goals that's a redundancy nevertheless going that was the right move folks h5 would have been sizzle instead he retreated saying i don't want to trade queens for the future i got other plans and that made magnus okay okay i'm glad you back down so notice magnus's queen in his kitchen i want you to remember this queen in the kitchen this is going to be very important later the queen in the kitchen. Magnus doesn't mind just sticking his queen in there. He's like, my queen's in your face. Whatever. Whatever. You want to attack it? Chase it out? Whatever. I'm bothering you. Remember this technique by Magnus. Just remember it. Queen in the kitchen. All right? So, rook b1, causing a little bit of problem. You, you play a move like b6 and block your bishop, weakening more light squares he didn't want to do. He could have just dropped back with bishop to b6. I got to say, I'm a little bit surprised he didn't play that move putting his bishop back on the good diagonal. Maybe he felt the pressure on the square was good. Instead, he played rook to a7. Now, I got to say, maybe he saw doubling on the a file as an option, possibly. Yes, that's possible. But Magnus is going to keep the energy going. Queen c4, guarding the pawn, back in the queen, out of the kitchen. And the rook on a7 is funny business. Thank you, Peschetti. Now, queen to c4. Queen's back for the moment. So, let's have some fun, he said. Queen to g6. Now that your queen left, I'm going to play for my h5 move. And at this moment, Magnus now misses a spectacular, just delish shot in the position. Right now, Magnus had the gorgeous move, knight to d4. That would have woken Hikaru up and all the commentators up instantly. Knight to d4. Get it right. The knight is untouchable because of queen takes d4. Whoop! With the check on the king and whoop! Let me borrow your rook until the next game. That would have been nasty a shot. Knight to d4. Now, of course, this is not checkers. You don't have to take things when they're in front of you. But the knight is going to green your pastures. You got the f5 square. You got the potential e6 square. The knight is also b5. What a beastie move that would have been. Magnus would have said, bing, just drop the knight on d4 to show the weakness behind the last move. Every move has a drawback. We preach that on this show. Queen g6, opening up the diagonal, knight d4, taking advantage of it. Magnus didn't play that way, missed that chance, saw something else that he thought was saucy. Rook to b5. Hikaru said, well, what's this about? Um, I don't get it. Like, back, back the heck up. What are you doing here? And Magnus said, yeah, I had another knight move in mind, which was, Boom! What? What? <laughs> Wait a minute. What? Out of nowhere, a knight takes on e5. That was the play, Magnus. Now, here's the deal. By the way, cray cray chess being played. So, Queen's Hank, let's take the piece. What's the deal? You're sacking a piece. What's the problem? And instantly after a very enterprising, super sharp, super interesting sacrifice, Magnus goes wrong. Like instantly, incredibly. Here, the right follow-up, which would have been total genius, total genius, was Rook takes on A5. Whoa, 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 whoa. You just sacked a knight. Now you're sacking a Rook. What are you doing? Well, the variation runs. Rook takes, and now look at this. Whoop, sweet queen move. Attacking the Rook on A5 and hitting the knight on E7. Nasty chess. Sack a knight, sack a Rook. Play queen b4, win back material. But you did sack a lot of material, so what if we maintain some of our material? Let's drop this piece back. Queen takes e7. Who's better here? Did you sacrifice and think about the numbers? Black, 
is a head material, technically speaking, an exchange for a bishop and pawn. But white has so much for it. Hey, weak pawn on e5. Hey, weak pawn on b7. Hey, your king's slightly exposed. Bishop could land on f5 as well. Definite compensation. Dynamic chess, rapid game, easier to play as white, as white's king will just nestle itself on this square and play g3, and it's going to be done. That's a, done, done, done. You got nothing here. You might argue, well, you know, you can play a little bit of queen action, chase the queen out. Agreed. Queen would have to leave, but the factors that we mentioned are still here. They're still there. The, the strong bishop that can never be opposed. Bishop f5 will always be there, plus the weak black king, plus the weak pawns. That just stays. And so this would have been a dog fight, like a straight dog fight. Magnus misses this move. We like he sacked, didn't play rook takes on a5. Instead, played rook takes on e5. He had other aspirations. He thought his rook was going to do damage down here, maybe get to e6, maybe get a queen d4 check off as well. As we mentioned before, he thought this is money. This looks like money. That's what he thought. That's what he thought. Until Hikaru brought out the wood and said, time for some tacticos. Tacticos. Yeah, you go to Taco Bell and get your tacticos with rook to d8. What? Your knight's hanging, Hikaru. Whoop. Tricks, tricks, tricky Hikaru. Magnus called Hikaru annoying. All right? That's where this guy's annoying. <laughs> like, you think you got him and all of a sudden, chirp, wait a minute, what's this about? Well, what this is about is, don't touch my knight because bing, check, and then you were trying to fork me. What if I fork you, okay? What if I hit your king with check and I attack your rook on e7? What the, what the, what? This is pure gangster chess right here. Little Mo loves this kind of play. Little Mo is feeling this kind of play, you feel me? Little Mo is like, this is how we like to play chess. By the way, Little Mo and his cousins limited offering at... X Clan merch, you could check it out as well as all the gear, gangster chess, boom, and beast. They're all there. This is beastie. This is gangster. This is a boom hit. Indeed, this is what we love when we show up to watch heavyweights fight it out. So, Rook to D8, special moves, spectacular types. Do you find moves like this hidden in positions the way Hikaru is able to? Now, Magnus is like, oh, ish, I can't take the knight. Mmm. Okay, okay, I got to shut this down. I got to shut it down, shut him down. No problem. You're never getting the knight back. You're never, never getting your piece back, controlling all the dark squares. Now Magnus is staring at the fact that he just sacked a piece for two pawns. He's got some comp, but it's not what he was hoping. It's not what he was hoping for. So now it's time. He plays a little bit of G3 action, and this guy doesn't take his foot off the gas, does Hikaru. Hikaru's like, all right, here's the deal. I'm backing up. I am backing up. Let's go. Let's coordinate. King to G2, no problem. Knight to G6, rut row. Uh, that knight might end up on this square at some point as well. Watch out. So Magnus says, all right, let me just shut that down and put something on a dark square. And the car says, whoa, whoa, I control the dark squares, don't you know? All right, let me go for the light squares. Well, thanks for the pawn. I'm not scared. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm not scared. Now, queen b4, a little bit late, but trying for his play. And now, rook f8, switching back. I love that Hikaru has no, I want to say, I want to say preconception. That's not the word I'm looking for. He No, there's a prejudice. That's the word I'm looking for, prejudices. He's not like he said, I'm going in this direction, therefore I can't change my mind. I'm willing to shift back and forth if need be and look at the dark square play. So Magnus says, let's see what you got. Uh, no, no, no rookie, se no rookie seven action for you. Hey, if I take a pawn and hit your rook, no problem. No problem. Full coordination. That's why the rook came back and now doubling rooks. And now a trade, trade, and bishop back. And now let's go on the attack. Let's go. All right, Magnus said, okay, I got two pawns already. Uh, what if I get a third pawn? Uh, no, no, no. Time for some play. Time for some play. Hitting your B-hop. Give me this pawn back. And now, this is tricky. A lot of players would go down to Magnus. Magnus trying to get some counterplay. Not Hikaru Nakamura. Not him. Why? Because after queen e4, let's stay on those dark squares. I, everybody, prevent your bishop. A pawn from going to a5 if you ever dreamt of it. Just the dark square. Look at how black has everything on dark squares. You got to love it. The bishop on b5 is like, 
Could I get some love? Could I please get some love? No, you can't. Stay on those light squares and shut up. Rook to C2. Drop the queen back. And now bishop back to E2. Hey, I'm attacking something on a light square. Yes, I'm getting some love. Shut up, we said. You get no love. More dark square pressure, pressure, pressure. Building and building. This is just crazy. This is just cray cray. All right. Retro Gandalf. Br Blunders and brilliancies. Absolutely amazing book. That's for sure. We'll see if we see any blunders and brilliancies in this match. Mm, I think we will. All right. Takes on H4. And now, knight back to g6. Mm, Magnus is feeling this pain on him right now. As he covers says it's all about the dark square pressure, y'all. Knight back to g6. Now, we saw the rook go to d8 and go back to f8. All right? We've seen this kind of oscillation. All right? We've seen it. Now, this move is threatening to take on h4. Uh, sorry. Penetrate with the queen. Pain. Excuse me. Uh, this square is problem. The queen is going to h2. So the king said, let me run now. All right. Let me play king f1. And now bishop b6. The continued assault. Dark square pressure. Opposite color bishop, folks. People say, oh, that's kind of droish, isn't it? Opposite color bishop. Not when there are other pieces on the board. No, no, no. If you want to attack somebody and you get the chance to trade off, make, make sure if you have the opposite color bishop that you pound away on that color complex just pound away dark square let's hit because there's nobody to oppose you there's no dark square bishop to say well let me put myself in the way nobody so pound away on those dark squares bishop f3 trying to defend and now check this out again ikaru no prejudices if you take knight takes ooh, i'm my rhythm attack i'm feeling the attack uh whoops uh, uh, row, what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Rook c6. And now suddenly your queen and bishop are under attack as well as the h6 square. And then h7 is going to come with a bomb effect. Uh-oh, row. No, 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 no. None of that nonsense. None of that nonsense. Hikaru said, I, I don't need that pawn. No prejudices. I was on e5. Let's go back to e5 and pressure your bishop. This is what my plan is to keep the attack energize and going and this is trouble where are you going to put the b hop if you drop the bishop back then uh boom hit him in the face what what wait a minute wait a minute what's this about uh excuse you boom more hits to the face stop it stop it wait a minute uh how do you want to feel this pain boom uh oh uh oh Bing, 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 bing. Knock out, knock out. Like, bing, bing, bing. Oh, my goodness. Mm, mm, mm. Just take it to him, Hikaru. Show him what you got. Pass up. The bishop can't move because sacrifices are in effect. And so what did Magnus do? Magnus dropped the move. Rook to D2. He's like, I'm in trouble. I'm in trouble. What I got to do? I, got, I can't let him swing at me. Queen back to C5. It's like... Move for one square. Go back. Go back again. I mean, it's incredible the lack of prejudices. And now it's over. It's all over. Too many threats. Bishop is hanging. F2 is going to hang. Watch out for queen c1 if you're not careful. Everything is going down. Magnus tried rook to c2. And now Hikaru said, time to sack my queen on you again. You remember what I did to you yesterday when I sacked my queen? Well, here it comes again. Except this is not a real queen sack. Let's be real. Because... After you take, check, tacticos, and that was it, folks. Magnus tried to struggle, hoping that maybe with no pawns on the board, maybe he could trade rooks or something like that. Well, guaranteed, Hikaru knows how to mate with Bishop and Knight versus King. Guaranteed, by the way. Now it's time as he marched across the board, trying to get the pawn going. Oh, that Knight move, by the way. Don't push your pawn. There's going to be a little tweezer. Whoops. And now, rook h6 check, backing up to defend the pawn. No, give us the pawn. Just, just give the pawn away. Just, just donate the pawn now. Don't even bother to think about it. Wait a minute. We don't need a pawn. <laughs> he gave us a rook. Talk about blunders and brilliancies. That is it. Magnus goes down in game one like he did yesterday, but this time with the white pieces. <gasps> what? All of Norway biting their fingernails. All of Hikaru fans are like, whoop, 
whoop, Naka in the building takes Magnus down in game one. You got to love this start, folks. This is how you want to start this kind of big time matchup where immediately the favorite is like, <laughs> I'm on my heels. But after this game, after this match, something was said by Magnus that everybody peeped. All right, this was really interesting. Magnus said he noticed that when Hikaru wins the first game, he tends to get a little nervous. He actually said this in the interview afterwards, folks. When Hikaru wins the first game, he tends to get nervous. He noticed that. So he felt he would have a chance to come back. Now, that's, that's a deep statement to make. It Was he trolling Hikaru? Telling Hikaru, yeah, I, I know I can come back against you because guess what? You know I'm the world champion. And when I lose, I'm coming hard. I'm going to hit hard. Thank you, Itwabi. I'm going to hit hard when you win. So you better bring it. Interesting, interesting observation. Do I believe it? Well, what can you say? The world champion is talking, dropping his competitive assessment. But that's something that's going to have to play in Hikaru's mind. He's like, okay, next time you're going to see. Next time you talk about if I win the first game, I get nervous. But in this matchup, we did see he won the first game, lost the second one. Would he lose the second one? Now he's at the white pieces, folks. Let's get to the second game as we got the countdown to the Crypto Cup in 45 minutes. All right, it's this time. It is Magnus with the black pieces. Now this time I'm going to flip the board to see from the black side. All right, this time, Magnus side yet again. So let's go. E4, C5. So we got a, a little Bishop B5, Moscow action, and Bishop A4. Subtle move dealing with the potential A6 threat. And now castles. This is dynamic stuff here, folks. You might see the E pawn and be like, that looks delish. Shouldn't I take it? Whoops, sorry about that. Knight takes E4 is all I was looking to play. This is jumping down. Excuse me, right here. Knight takes E4. Well, the problem is when you start snacking on pawns, Early in the game, without developing your pieces, you might get hurt. So a move like Rook to E1, for example, dropping the Knight back to F6, and now D4. Yeah, I'm down a pawn, but I don't feel like I'm down a pawn because we're just attacking instantly. D4, in effect, if you trade and Knight takes, already the action is fierce. You play a move, for example, like E6, well, Knight B5 shows up. And you got a little weak spot on the C7 square, on the D6 square, I'm anticipating right now. And if D5, then bishop to F4, and now you got the weaky on the C7 square. So the dynamics of the development, the speedy development, makes white happy to play a position like this. Go ahead, take my pawn. I dare you. So, and by the way, let's just point out, if instead of E6, he had played E5, then knight to f5 and again the problems remain the, t the pressure is just so speedy and the activity with the black king stuck in the board uh, is just too much so nobody's taking that pawn so instead magnus plays a6 with a little wee bit of a threat of dominating the bishop with b5 and c4 uh ikaru said i'm not worried i'm not scared i dare you to take my pawn now little c4 action i dare you to take the pawn now well, again, don't touch the fire, okay? You might get burned. Another variation again with D4. Takes, takes. Again, we're talking square bids. And by the way, in this line, E6 now, there is no knight B5. Hmm, maybe we could take the pawn. Maybe it's okay now. Maybe, maybe we're feeling all right until one of our favorite moves on this stream would show up in your face and boom! Oh, oh rucksacks. Love it. Rook takes E6. Boom! Hit him in the face. All right? That's the kind of rook sack that'll wake you up. Bit takes, takes, and all of a sudden we got a knight C7 mm, win the rook back. And if you try to defend, you say, wait a minute. Why'd you sack your rook? Because huh. you ain't going nowhere. You are never going anywhere, anywhere. You're just going to sit and watch me pound away at your position you try to stop me. Where's your king going? Your king is never castling. It can't go here because it's just going to be pain and you're going to run around and get hit. And one day we're going to play a bishop move. For example, you play h6 trying to get your king to f7, bishop to e3, and it's like, um, where are you putting your pieces? Don't dare touch this. 
We're just going to chill like a villain. And what are you doing now? As White's Peace is just a swarming. It's a swarm. Swarm. At any moment, Knight D5 is going to happen. You're pinned here. Your king can't leave. Your queen might get trapped. Incredible. Incredible line, folks. Incredible. So, what that means is don't touch the pawn. So, E6. Hang on, I got no parts of that pawn. I got no. Okay. Now the knight sneaks into C3, having snuck the pawn in to C4 as well. And now bishop to E7. And now it's time. Expansion time. Takes, takes, and castles. All right. This is still just a position. Despite all those crazy variations I just showed you, this is just a position. Okay? This is just a Maroxy bind, and black is fine. So, queen E2. Queen C7. Magnus is chilling. Now bishop to b3 unusual for the maroxy to put the bishop on b3 normally there's a pawn on that square normally normally so bishop b3 funny business so magnus is like all right i'm just developing y'all little hedgehog formation no problem no problem rook c1 rook e8 all this is well known queen drops back to b8 this could have been played in the 70s 80s 90s okay magnus is like i know this is all old school stuff and now the lack of prejudice of Hikaru Nakamura is extraordinary. <laughs> we just saw the bishop go to b3. Now it's back to a4, pinning down the knight. Stopping any kind of b5 demonstrations. I mean, the guy is, he just, just he's like, it doesn't matter what he just did. Forgotten if he needs to play something else. That's an extraordinary ability, folks. Incredible talent. Rook to c7. And now, boom, 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 b4. Expansion time. Expansion time. Let's go. All right, and now check this out. I thought you weakened your pawn. Uh, yeah, no prejudices. Bishop back to b3. Incredible, the oscillations. This is just maestroful indeed. So Magnus is like, all right, I can't just sit here. Let me get a b5 break. That's the point when you weaken the c3 square. I can play like this. I can get not just your c4 weakness, but also your c3 weakness. Except he did not suspect how strong it was going to be when Hikaru said, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait. We got to get a little moan here for this one. Ready, ready? Hikaru said, you ready? You ready, little moan? You ready? You ready, ready? Ready? This, this is what happened next. This what, 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 where am I? Where am I? Hikaru said, <laughs> it's built up. I got to get this right. This is the first time I'm doing this, folks. It's just inspiration. Right? Hikaru said, Whoa, I did that too fast. I did it too fast, little mo. I did it too fast. I showed two moves in a row. Let's get back to it. Let's do it again. Boom! Boom! All right, that's the kind of move you want to see. Little Mo's happy when he sees moves like that one. Just, huh? Woo! The gloves. Let's get the gloves right. Okay. The glove is shaking too. <laughs> Boom! Hit him. Just, I ain't afraid. You just might be Magnus Carlson. My name is Naka. All right, we're putting it on you. Takes. And more takes. I got two pawns. Now I got two connected PS kids are gonna run down the board. And your rook is hanging. Where's that gonna go? You go to C6. I might just still fork you. Alright. What you gonna do? This is gonna be painful. Magnus is like, yo. Yo, yo, yo. This guy is trying to hurt a oh, man. Okay, okay. I feel you. This is sharp. This is crazy. What to do? Magnus is sitting there like, I don't know. So Magnus goes out on a limb. This is like about as far a limb as you can go. There's all this action on this side, and the world champion says, screw it. Let's play H5. <laughs> Let's play H5. What? What? <laughs> but, 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 but what is that? Like, what the heck? You're pushing your H pawn? I'm picking up your rook whenever I want. I got PS to passing. And you're like, what the heck is H? What is that? It looks like garbage. Like, what? What? Seriously? Like, <laughs> I'm just going to push upon. Like, <laughs> that looks stupid. That looks dumb. I'm going to ignore you until it. What are you doing? You got nobody over there. What's happening? I mean, what is this about? Please. I'm going to say right about now. He should have realized there was a method to the Magnus Madness, okay? He should have realized this is the world champion you're dealing with. He ain't stupid. He ain't dumb, all right? He can mix it up with the best of them. So right about now, it was time to pick up this rook and shut down this demonstration with a little H3. Just shut it down. You might weaken some dark squares, but don't let him get any more. 
Instead, Hikaru said, I don't believe any of your ish happening on that side. I'm just going to play a five and keep my energy going. And now he said, okay, thanks for the three moves. I'm just trying to crack your side. Let me see what happened. Now, it probably would have made sense to kill that mofo. Just take the pawn. That pawn's got to go. Just kill it. Bye. Get rid of it. Instead, Hikaru said, nah. I don't believe anything is happening over there. Zero. Zero. That's garbage. I don't know why the French accent came out, but it did. Maybe it felt more than zero to say zero. Zero. Huh? Rien du tout. Huh? Hey, stop. Seriously? Seriously? No. Pas du tout. That's not a problem. That's what he thought. Check this pawn when it lands on G2. That's four moves Magnus wasted. Did nothing except H, H, H takes. That's all he did. But man, it's going to get hyped in here now because he finally took the rook. Queen takes and said, I have two beautifully connected pass pawns rolling down the board. And I'm going to hurt your feelings right now. Now, that looks impressive. Those are two of them, okay? That said, you did sack a piece, so it is possible to take one of them and not have two of them be on the board. That, that could be possible. But also, it's not so easy to actually advance these pawns because squares are covered, particularly the B6 square. You can't get, you can get A6 with no problem, but B6 you're going to have to work to get, all right? The, te the timing will be necessary to understand. So Magnus very adeptly said, let me sidestep first by backing up. Let me just do this. Heavyweight, talk about imbalances, folks. How do you assess positions like this? Don't pretend, oh, yeah, you know, the computer said blah, blah, blah. Yeah, right. Shush. Because it's impossible to assess. This is pawn down here. You got the two Pieskas. What's the danger in a position? It's hard to say. Very hard to say. So what your man did was he said, look, if he pushes, he realized if he pushes to A6, let's just make that move on the board. Now, this square, it, it's kind of hard to get past, especially after a little knight C5 action. And you can't like, mm, I can't get B6. I'm annoyed. Now, you could try B6 first. OK, but after the queen draws back, now you can't get A6 again because of the darn B6 square. Hmm. Hmm. You know, you got to work here. You, the part, you're not just going to push them through. That's the point. So after Bishop to A8, he said, all right, this is what I need to do. I need to bring my rook over to B1. Now I got more protection. I'm going to make those pawns. I'm going to shove those pawns right down your face. That's what I'm going to do. All right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to shove them down your face. And the Magnus said, okay, enough. Enough is enough is enough it's time and what'd he say boom let's break this game open let's get it started yeah i see your two pass pawns but it's time for me to sharpen up the contest with a break in the middle of the board let's go it's jailbreak in the hedgehog this is the jailbreak move for the black prisoners all right they've been sitting back like this all this time and they're just waiting waiting wait we're waiting around we're waiting around let's go let's go make it happen d5 is how you make it happen Hikaru said, I'm playing this move. Really? Well, guess what? I'm not protecting that side. I'm centralizing my queen. Let's go to the middle of the board and apply maximum pressure to your position. F4. Okay, now you're asking for it. The best move here, according to the engines, was queen to B2. Try to get the queen out of your face. Try to trade and use your past pawns to your benefit. But F4, folks, is not it. Now you're bleeding weaknesses everywhere. And remember when we said queen in the kitchen? Here we go again. <laughs> queen in the kitchen. We saw it last game. Queen in the kitchen. Except this queen is just annoying as all. The car was annoying. This queen's annoying. Can you imagine a queen just sticking his face right? I'm here. I'm not afraid. I'm in your face. Yes, I'm by myself. Yes, usually queens get trapped 
when they're in the position. I love it when I make a move and the sirens go off. This is pure New York. I don't get this in Fort Lauderdale. It's like quiet, chilling. But New York is like, woo, woo, woo. Queen's in there. Woo, woo, woo. Emergency call the cops. Queen just showed up. What's criminal alert? Uh-oh. Queen in the kitchen. He said, let me try to trade it now. Magnus says, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going nowhere. I am hanging out. I am my stinking paws, muddy. You know how, like, like a bear shows up. Not that this ever happened to me, because it didn't. But a bear shows up, I'm imagining, in the kitchen. It's got muddy paws. You're trying to get rid of the bear. And it's also got muddy paws. So it's just causing all kinds of dirt stains all over your carpet. And you're like... Could we get rid of this thing, please? Like, look what it's doing. It's doing damage, d dirty damage. And the past Pieskas can't go anywhere. So he tried to ignore it with Bishop to A4, hoping and praying that maybe he can get his pawns down the board. But remember, Magnus already is up a piece. You sacked the piece. So he's ready. You, you're not going to queen both at the exact same time. So let's see what you plan to do, because you're going to have to push one of them. So Magnus is like... Let's keep the attack going. Let's keep it rolling. Let's keep it rolling. Let's go. No B7 for you. Drop the knight in the face. Maybe we'll take this one. This is hanging. This is hanging. All kinds of dirt happening here. So, A6. Desperation time. Magnus, Magnus, I told you, you can't push both. You can only get one. Give me that one. Okay. Give me that one. Now your two pass pawns are gone. They're gone. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Now I'm actually up upon this joker on this square where your king is not feeling so safe anymore. And after rook takes, let's drop a bishop c5 and rip the last bit of defensive shred from your position. Here we go. Let's get it started. Rook back to b3 trying to defend. Give me the free b and it's all day now. Bishop takes, knight takes. Rook trying to defend, trying to keep the position together. Shit. Magnus is not afraid to go into end games. May not even mean the best way to play, but he says, let's go into this end game where I'm going to show you that despite you being ahead in exchange, I'm the one who's ruling this chessboard. F4 is now hanging. Give it up. I got four pawns, four of them. So I ain't worried about the material you've got. Your exchange means nothing. Nada para ti. It's over here, okay? Let's keep playing. F What's this? Lunch. Give me that. But what's this? Give me that. Penetrate. <laughs> uh oh. Rut row. What's this? I'm not afraid of this. Okay. I don't know what you do. Oh, you want to win that pawn? You can have it because I still got others. This is painful. This is over. Quick blitzing out of the moves. Rook takes. Rook to G7. No, no, no. You cannot have the G6 pawn. Still trying to dance. But this is what's going to happen. This king can go here. This king can go there. Your king looks thank. You're going to lose this game. Hikaru said, no mas, no mas. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. It's over. Let's just, I don't even want to see another move. That's it. <laughs> chop, chop. What a game. Talk about a heavyweight struggle, folks. Just like boom and a boom and a boom. Like whoop, wild. <laughs> By the way, the day before, a win for Hikaru. A win for Magnus. A win for Hikaru. A win for Magnus. The next day, switch colors. Still a win for Hikaru. And another win for Magnus. Six wins in a row. This is chess at the highest level. This is what the fans pay to see. And many of y'all didn't pay a dime to actually see. You can just sit and watch. This is the hate. This is why you got to make donations to chess sites, folks. You got to make donations. If you can, look, they're providing this incredible content. you got to make sure they're successful because we want to see more and more and more. You feel me? More and more. Whatever you can do, a little donation here, a little subscription here, a little membership there to these websites. They're showing us just delicious content. And kudos to Magnus for being a leader in the effort to pushing this all forward. Incredible. So that's two games down. I only have 30 minutes before this tournament I'm talking about right now starts again. So let me keep it going with the third game right away. We are now talking Magnus with the white pieces. We've seen E4, six games in a row. Six in a row. All right? Now, is Magnus going to play E4 again? Especially after what just happened in the last game. He said, I'm not going to play E4. I'm not going to play D4. I'm not going to play C4. I'm not going to play Knight F3. Dude, you're running out of moves. B3, we got it. You played that before. No, I'm not going to play B3. What? 
what? What do you have left? Let me honor all the good folks from Poland and play the move B4. Now, I know some Polish friends are like, why that's got to be our opening? Like a little B4 action over there known as the Polish opening, sometimes known as the orangutan. It's like, why B4 got to be ours? I mean, the English got C4 for crying out loud. And we get B4 attached to our name. Hey, Magnus, play the move. He said, let's go. Let's start it out. So Ikaru must have smiled a little bit and said, <laughs> I got you to back down from your theory now. You're trying to just throw out some stuff. Well, let's go. Because I'm not going to be afraid of this one. Let's go. So Magnus is like, no, nah, I got something for you. And traditionally, usually, Black does not take on B4 and give White the center pawn for this pawn. But Hikaru was saying, I'm not even worried about that. You can go right ahead. Let's play. C3, Bishop back. E3. I see positions like this. I'm like, um, I'm not scared for Black at all. At all. Like, black must be okay. Now a trade and a G3 action. Wow, Magnus, you're being exotic right now. Well, if you want to put your bishop on diagonal, congratulations. We're going to put the bishop on the other diagonal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Got to play knight E2. Cackle, cackle. Rook to E8. And now rook to E1. Rook to C8. Black has played pure, developing, clean moves. Game on. White should chill. White should chill, right? White should be cool about this position. What did he do? By the way, giving up the dark square bishop as well. A3. Now you're like, Magnus, listen. Listen. <laughs> There's this thing called development. Okay? There's a thing called development. I know you may have heard of it. And you're playing all these quiet moves. And we don't believe it. Like, why didn't your knight at least develop? To the D2 square. I mean, just bring your piece out. What's the problem? Like, there's something wrong with developing? No? Yes? And Ikaru is like, nah, you, you enough exotic, enough of the exotic nonsense. I'm going to take this right now. Your turn. Got to take with the rope. I'm going to take this right now. Your turn. And now, since you've been preparing all this time, Boom! Hit him with the tactic, Ikaru. What the heck? Hit him hard. That's right, little Mo loves it. Knight takes D4. Your little A3 demonstration. What are you doing? Are you crazy? Let me swing at you. Takes. Give me that. Check. Oh, sorry. Takes. Before the check. This is a swap. Takes before the check. Now your rook is hanging. Luckily, you played the move A3, but I know you didn't suspect this was coming. Rook A2. Now check. Drop back, please, and give me the night. Just give me the night. <laughs> he just stole two pawns. He just stole two pawns out of the combination. Shing, shwing, 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 shwing. What a what a variation. Magnus is so fortunate, so fortunate to have this move, because if you you have the opposite color bishops, if Black could keep the rook on the board. White could resign. If Black could just keep this rook, White could literally resign. Two pawns down. Pa pass pawn in the middle. This guy's going to promote. Thank you, Vicious Mormon. That's funny, Vicious Mormon. All right. Th this, this would be over. But thanks to this fork, man, queens are excellent defenders. Thanks to this move, the rook is under attack, the bishop, and very critically, the move a3 stops rook to b4. Yeah, don't try to say he saw all this. Please, please, okay? This is not the position he was aiming for when he played the move a3, all right? But fortunately for him, there's no rook b4, there's no rook d1, and so Hikaru has to save material by playing rook to b2 or rook a1, forcing the trade, and now we get the opposite color bishop ending in a lesser form because this one is not as good for black especially after magnus dropped queen d6 on him and suddenly he cannot avoid a bishop hitting this d7 pawn spoiler spoiler all right great play by magnus to save his behind g6 stopping the back rank action a4 
curtailing, curtailing, that's right, I use the word curtailing any of the aspirations of these pawns because the light square bishop is dominating the action so you can't get anything going. And so the game fizzles out quickly. Queen d2, not letting anything come in. And now bishop to b5, hello. And now give us this pawn. And now let's back up and this Magnus can handle. Now it's only one passer that's not going anywhere. I should say one extra pawn that's not going anywhere. And now it's about the light squares. Give Hikaru credit. He tried. He tried. He tried to get something happening. Man is like, no, 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 no. I know about this kind of stuff. I'm just going to trade off everything. Uh, create this kind of position where you only have one threat and it's not going to be enough. And Hikaru just conceded basically with this move. And that's going to be all she wrote as everything gravitates to light squares. And we can go through this game quickly, folks, because there's just no progress to be made whatsoever. And they repeated, Magnus survived. Magnus survived. That's what happened. Magnus survived. Queen d3. Right in. <sighs> Heart attack. Safe. <laughs> okay. Another loss with the white pieces could have spelled curtains for Magnus. Instead, he drew. The next game, both of them drew. I mean, they drew. It's got to be both. Obviously, duh. They drew. And they drew because it had been too much fireworks. The first draw... After seven games, this game was, and the next game is like, all right, let's do the blitz portion. Let's do the blitz. Always play A3. J Ming, don't play A3. Okay, no, don't. Please develop your pieces. Please don't try this at home. Magnus barely survived playing the move A3. Okay, now it's time for what we all came for. Deservedly so. After the heavyweights have been punching each other in the face, hitting both six wins out of eight games, we want to see the playoffs. Do we want to see it? We want to see it. Little more like, I want, I want to see it. I want to see what happens. Everybody want to see what happens, all right? Let's see what happens. It's time for the playoffs. And I only got 20 minutes. I can pull it off before the round starts. Let's go. Let's bring up the next game. Hikaru was the one who finished with the higher seed. So because Black had been doing so well, Hikaru said to Magnus, here's the deal. I get to choose what color. So I'm going to choose Black in the first game. I'm going to choose Black in the first game. That way, of course, I have White in the second game. So that's my choice. All right. And if I need to win, at least I'll have the White pieces. So let me just deal with you with the Black pieces. So Magnus played E4 three times. Had success twice. Not because he necessarily played great all those games, but did have success twice. Then he lost with E4. He tried B4. So he said, I'm definitely, I'm not doing B4 again. That's out. I, that failed experiment. Uh, E4, I don't want to do again. So let me switch and play D4. Let's completely switch to something he probably didn't expect. What a great choice. Because here we go. All right, here we go. Come on. Here we go. Come on. No problem here. And now, thank you, Slice Serve. Much appreciated. Some, you guys trying to throw some Polish at me. I got Polish friends who can say it. I'm not trying to say those words. Please, stop it. Bishop to e, E2. And now takes. Now, by the way, Magnus usually tries a little bit of C5. And Hikaru is as prepared as the day is 24 hours long. All right? Prepare for that stuff. But Magnus said, you know, I'm going to chill. Just chill. I'm going to just chill and play a little bishop e2. And when you take, I'm just going to castle. Let's go. And Karu says, okay, we kind of switched up a little bit. I'm going to play knight b6. I know this is supposed to be okay. a4, what's your knight doing over there? We're going to challenge it. Eh, I can stop you. You weaken to b4 square. You weaken b4. So I can play a5. No problem. So now Magnus said, okay, I'm not trying to win. You think. You, you stink. I'm trying to play knight e5. And get my pawn back. That's what you stink. But I ain't stinking making that move. That's not what I'm thinking about. All right. That is not what I'm thinking about. What I'm thinking about is E4. Let's go. We're going to keep this action busy. We sacked the pawn. This is a blitz game. You show me how you're going to develop your pieces. And instantly. All right. Instant. I don't even know what accent that was. Sometimes I just be saying stuff. Anyway, most of the time I just be saying stuff. Instantly, Hikaru played 
a crazy move. Cray, cray move right away. He should be more passive about it. Maybe play a move like bishop to b4. Maybe play a move we got like bishop to d7. Maybe even chill, excuse me, here with a move like h6. Just to chill for a minute to wind up what you're going to do. Bishop b4 would be like my favorite move. But Magnus still got chances there, no problem. Instead, he said, let's break free. Let's break free with the move c5. Now, what is the problem with the move c5? Problem number one. You weaken squares in your position. D6 is weak. B6 is weak. Remember, the C pawn was here. So those squares, immediately weak. You also weaken, permanently, B5 as well. Because the C pawn could go to C6. Used to be able to go to C6, but B5 is also weak. You also weaken D5. Remember, every, pawn, every move you make creates a weakness. Every pawn move creates an unfixable weakness. Because pawns don't go backwards. You might make a move and you might pull it back with a piece. But pawns don't go backwards. So... We're talking about weak squares. And Magnus sniffs out weak squares like Shaq sniffs out food. Okay? This is like... I smell a square. I smell squares. All right? Knight B5. Let's go. I'm going to be there. Permanente. Permanente. Forever. All right? Forever, ever, forever. Let's go. Hitting the C7 square... Usually a knight goes there, but we also have a little bishop action hitting the queen and king. Wait a minute. Uh, he comes like, uh, uh, wait, wait, what, what? Wait, 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 what, what, what? what? But what happened was, um, let me back my knight up. That's not what you want to do with your knight. No, 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 no. And now Magnus said, uh, let's open up the game while your pieces are sitting on the back rank. And my pieces are going to get some energy, some flow, some flow. Now, if you trade... Well, we're going to take, when you take back, we're just going to keep going. Just, just more energy, more, more, more. This, by the way, would have been the best case scenario for Hikaru, but he didn't want to play like this. He should have, but he didn't want to. He should have. What did he do instead? He decided to get fancy. Oh, you fancy, huh? Well, this fancy move, creating all kinds of discombobulations happening in the position. Look at these pieces. Look at these things. What is this? What kind of formation, malformation kind of put, for, what are you doing to your position? You're twisted in knots. You look like a pretzel. No, he did not play bishop to e3. My bad. He, you look like a pretzel. You look like the contortionist. It's like he's doing one of these with his pieces. Oh, oh no. Never going to happen. Never going to happen. Let's go. Take a pawn. Let's see you do it. Takes on C9. Queen C2. And now white pieces are flowing like the Nile River. I mean, look at white pieces. They're just beauteous. Look at those pieces. Ooh, just take a pick. Wait a minute. Let me give us. Oh, too beautiful. Okay. We got to take up. That's for my students. This is where I want you to put your pieces, students. This is where you want to put your pieces. I just I should just email them this when they're busy doing all kinds of crap. With their, I was like, what are you doing with your pieces? This is where you want your pieces as white, okay? Just take a look at this. Memorize it and then do this every time. Hikaru said queen e7 and now he's trying to get a little e5 chase Magnus's pieces away uh, in this position somehow. That's, that's too far. Can I draw a short arrow, please? E5, and uh, Magnus said, um, sorry, you're not going to breathe. <laughs> you're not going to breathe. I'm choking you now. Choking with the E5 pawn. Mm, look at this knight. Knights like to have a future. <laughs> knights on the back rank, they better <laughs> damn straight have a, some kind of future. This knight has no future. Your pieces still are tied up in knots. This is ugly. Like, ugly, incredible, just indelible impression. He's putting his foot in the eyeball. Mm. Stop it. Please stop. H6 played rook to D1. Look at these. Look at these delicious pieces. And now knight to B6 trying to develop, hitting the bishop. Can't have the bishop. By the way, thanks for pushing my bishop to the square I wanted to go to in the first place. Let's get that hour right. Bishop to b1. Rut row. Rut row. Here it comes. 
Knight to d5 centralization, hitting a bishop. No, no, no. Let's talk about Tutski right now. F5 had to be done. Had to be done, folks. G6 is also playable. If you don't like your pawns near your king, you'll die rapidly after that. So instead, he played F5, but this is Magnus Carlsen we're talking about. Your knight has appeared. Wow, that's really great. But guess what's going to happen in two moves? We're killing it. Now, you got to understand, guys like Magnus, easy chess would have been rook over, no problem. But now Magnus, no, I smell moments, moments. Bishop takes F6. What's so sweet and delish about this moment, folks? Well, what's great is if you play knight takes on F6, then mm, mm, mm. gangster chess time. Boom! Whoop, whoop, whoop. Hit him. Obviously, if you play queen takes, your queen is busy defending the bishop on c5. So we're going to take that and have two pieces for the rook and your position still stinks. But it's this move you play knight takes when whoop, check. And whoop, another check. And now there are two ways to do it. There's the typical way. You must remember this technique, folks. This is the typical way. Bishop to h5. This is beautiful. You put the queen in, the bishop in, then you draw the bishop back so you can get the g6 square. This is the artistic, beautiful way to execute. Queen g6 is coming. It's pure pain now. It's o -o over. Over. You obviously don't want to try to play knight to e5 to try to get out of this one because look at your king. Look at your... Is that a king? Where are you going? You're going nowhere. There's nowhere to go. You go back, you're going to get mated. We see the queen g6 square, so I'm not going to point it out. Uh, I just did. If you go here, then um, that's a good way to die. Okay, right in the middle of the board, mate on a stick. All right, so bishop f6, perfect timing. For those of you who don't want to trade knight for bishops, that's the grandmaster move. Bishop takes on f6, pawn takes, and now to bring the rook in. Your king looks terrible. Rook d5, taking your knight is threatened. Your pawn on e6 is going to be weak. All your pieces are just like... I don't even know what to say about him. I don't know. I don't, I don't know what to say. Like, how is Magnus doing this to him? After that fight it was, this is a beat down with the white pieces. Queen tried to defend so that nothing could penetrate until it's like, uh, addition of blunders and brilliancies. Not so brilliant, not so blunderful. I mean, not so brilliant, but very blunderful. Took a piece, and now he comes like, um, what did I do? What did I do? I, I just, I just, blunder, what? Uh, okay. But you can understand. His position stunk. It was horrible. It was a horrible. It was so bad that he tried to get out of the pin from the rook takes d5 threat and forgot that his bishop was hanging in the position. Didn't matter. He was getting toasted. Anyway, there's no place to hide this knight, folks. If you play this move, then there's still rook d7 action. Remember, this b-hop is hanging. So, didn't matter what happened. Uh, there's another move. Sorry, just quickly. He could have also played the move knight to b4. This doesn't hurt anybody after queen g6 check. This queen cannot leave because this b-hop is hanging as well. It's all she wrote. This is deadly dangerous. Done. Done. Pain. So, queen c5. Magnus, finally, for the first time in the match, takes the lead. Takes the lead. First time. That's how you do it. When you do a comeback, you have to eventually take the lead in order to cement that comeback. And after all that fighting, Magnus takes the lead. One more game. That, that was the blitz game, remember. One more chance for Hikaru and... Magnus said, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Let me flip the board. Magnus said, oh, no, oh, no. Not this game, folks. Hikaru decided to go with the E4. And Magnus played the Berlin, anti-Berlin style. And here's where it goes, folks. Was when Magnus decided to play night back, night over. We've seen this maneuver before. And play this move. This is the moment when Hikaru decided to back down and play Queen E2. When you play a move like Queen E2, a guy like Magnus is like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. Now, it's like I'm playing white and you're playing black. All right? This is what's up. This is what's up. Now, white has the center. That is, black has the center. And it's pain for Hikaru. And Magnus never lets him off the mat. Bishop D2. 
Are you for realio? By the way, we just want to make a point. If you take on D5 because you think you might win this pawn, you stink, you might win this pawn. Well, after knight takes, knight takes, um, mm, well, thanks very much for your piece. We really appreciate the donation to the cause. Uh, you know, that was very nice of you, okay? Because now you're going to die. Now you're just going to die. If you play this move, well, uh, mm, thanks for the donation because F6 is coming. So don't touch the pawn. And after that, it was all, this is just going to be pain. You ready? Because watch what happens. Bishop D2, rook to E8. Now he's got everything protected. And he never lets Hikaru up off the mat after that. He's like, I'm just going to dominate the position. Every move you make. And then this move, D4. By the way, the queen to F1. Just make a point. And now bishop back to B8. And this B hopping queen on the long diagonal is just pain. Oh, my goodness. All of white's pieces look ridiculous. Black is just completely dominant. Queen E2. Drop the knight in the house. Thanks for the dark square bishop. Drop the queen back. Prepping the move H5. And it's all downhill. It's all downhill. Drop the bishop up. No trades for you. Move the rook over. Pinning that pawn. Maybe a B4 thing. Knight back. No, you cannot have this bishop. No, I'm not trading queens. Here I come. Knight to H5. What is A4? Here we go. Come on. <laughs> F5 action. That's nothing. That was a fly buzzing by. Rook to the A-file. Ain't going to do nothing about this pawn. Nope, nope. You can't sack on E6 and get my D-pawn. That's what he was hoping for. A little, little action here. No, no, no. Rook to D8. What? Uh, move the queen. Move the queen. Your rook is hanging, by the way. Queen back. Give me that! Remember, he only needs a draw. But by the way, this is winning too. Because if takes, then check. Give me that with check. Let me check you again. Let me drop an F3 on you. Check, check. That's, that's mate. That's mate knocking on the door. That's Matutski. That's your death. All right. After bishop takes on H3, rook G6. Uh, move your rook. Move your rook. Okay. I stole the pawn and I'm coming in the kitchen. Knight coming into G3. Pain, pain, pain. He played bishop to C2, hoping to sack an exchange. Instead, he just gifted a rook. That's it. Okay. Rooks hanging. Hanging. You can't take back. That's it. That's game. It's over. It's over. Over. It's done. Son. Pawn Grubber rated with a party of 47. What's up? What's up? You guys came at the end of the show. It's the end of the show because I wanted to get in this stream before the game started. You can check me out on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. You can see this on replay. This was the summation of an epic match that at the end, it looked like Hikaru tired from all the tension and Magnus rose to the occasion and did what world champions do. Extraordinary, all right? Extraordinary indeed. We got to say that was amazing. That was amazing folks. Woo! If you want to see more of these videos, don't forget to click the subscribe button and please follow me on twitch.tv slash GMAshley.